evening. Good morning, Jenny. Hi, Caroline, and welcome to this week's vlog. Uh, my name is Jenny Show, and I am a student school nurse based in Reading. My name's Caroline Smith, and I'm a staff nurse with the Wokingham School Nursing Team. So this week on our vlog, we are going to have a chat about bedwetting. So the first thing we are going to say about bedwetting that it's not anyone's fault and it doesn't happen because children or young people are being lazy or being naughty and um, they shouldn't be punished um, for having a wee accident overnight. Um, we have got good news and um, it is a treatable condition. So if we cover the basics first and talk about what exactly is bedwetting. Bedwetting is described as any amount of wetting happening at night in a child age five years or older, and it's a medical condition. How common is bedwetting? It's more common than what you think. About half a million children and young people in the UK suffer from, suffer from bedwetting. It's just not something we generally talk about openly. It can occur in both boys and in girls, and it's commonly reported from all over the world. However, boys seem to be affected twice as often as what girls are. It can be genetic. And when we when we talk about genetic, uh, it, it, it's reported that up to 80% of children with bedwetting tend to have a relative in the family. So for example, if both parents had issues with bedwetting, the chances are of wetting for the child is five times more likely. And if it's one parent that has had the issue, then the chances are the child is three times more likely. OK, so Caroline, you're just going to have a little chat about the impact for a child um, or young person. Yep, so bedwetting for a child or young person can be a very embarrassing and also debilitating experience for them. Um, it can have a significant impact, a negative impact on the child's self-esteem and how they view themselves. It can cause tension in household as well as causing arguments at times. However, children have ranked bedwetting as being the third most stressful event after parental divorces and arguments. Children may experience some problems such as low self-esteem, self-image, self-confidence and feeling isolated. They also socially opt out of things like sleepovers and residential trips because they don't want their friends to know or they feel embarrassed if it should happen um, when they're away. They become withdrawn and can feel anxious and sometimes even have difficulty making friends. Children can have concerns that they are the only ones who are wetting the bed and that they have to keep it secret or that they are different from other children. It can bring feelings of shame and isolation for children. But as Jenny said, there are many, many children out there who still wet the bed. So do not feel ashamed at all. It can also have a big impact for parents and carers as well. So as a parent, you could have a mixture of emotions regarding your child's bed wetting. These may include a loss of confidence in your own parenting skills, feelings of being sad and worried for your child, feelings of anger and guilt even at times. But an important fact to remember is that it is not yours or your child's fault that they are wetting the bed still at night. Dealing with bed wetting can be difficult and tiring as a parent or carer. It's important to stay calm and support your child. The practical side can be difficult for parents as well, including all the extra washing and changing of the sheets in the middle of the night. But this is perfect weather to be going through with getting your child dry at night at the moment. There's also the financial burden with the cost of having the washing machine on all the time, having the tumble dryer on in the winter, all the extra costs of the washing powder and everything that you need to buy. But just remember that this is a treatable condition. Absolutely. That is that is really important. Um, and how do you help your child? So if I just talk a little bit about how you can help your child about bedwetting. Um, talk to them about it and um, understand their worries. Tell them that bedwetting is not their fault. Tell them that they're not alone and it's a common condition. Be calm and patient with your child as they may have a mixture of emotions. 
Now, there, what are the causes of bedwetting? There are three main causes of why children wet the bed. The first one is that their bladders don't stretch enough to hold the wee they make at night time. Your bladder is a muscle. Secondly, children can produce too much wee at night time. And lastly, they don't wake up when the bladder sends the signal to say it's full. However, for some children, it could be a combination of all three reasons why they wet the bed. Now we have got clinics for, for children to support um, with bed wetting and they are based in Berkshire. There's one in Wokingham, there's one in Reading, and we have one in West Barks and in Bracknell. These clinics are run by registered nurses and they can provide support and treatment options. Um, we would say that the ERIC website is a fantastic resource. It's got a world of knowledge um, with advice and further support um, with bedwetting. So over to you, Caroline, you're going to talk about how how I can help my child further with bedwetting. Yeah, so firstly, really, it's all about the drinking. We need to be seeing how much our children are drinking during the course of the day and counting them up. If your child's having less than six drinks in a day, this could be part of the issue. So we need to be trying to spread the drinks out across the day, but mostly in the earlier part of the day. They should be having six to eight drinks. Uh, and when we say six to eight drinks, these are usually roughly around 200 mils each. We want to be slowing down that drinking in the latter part of the day, though. So about an hour to an hour and a half before they're going to bed, we want to stop the fluid intake. Um, never deny your child fluids, especially in the summer months. It can be very hot, but it's important to remember that if they have drunk enough during the day, they won't be feeling thirsty at night time before they're going to bed. By doing this, this helps to train their bladder to hold on to the wee and get the bladder to behave better at night time. Now, certain drinks can have a diuretic effect, so which makes you produce more wee. Uh, these include caffeinated drinks, including hot chocolate, fizzy drinks and high citrus drinks, including blackcurrant and orange juice. Every now and again, children can have these drinks on special occasions. It's better to have it earlier on in the day because they do increase the risk of bedwetting at night. But we do try to promote solely drinking water most of the time. Getting on top of good drinking habits is really, really important and is one of the main important aspects in bedwetting and getting them to reduce or stop wetting the bed at night. There are drinking charts available on the ERIC website or from the clinic when you come to see us uh, to keep a recording of what your child is drinking every day. Again, not only with the we, we need to be checking out the poo as well. So we need to make sure that your child is pooing regularly. Uh, are they pooing daily, every other day, at least four times a week? And is it easy for them to have a poo? If you've got worries or anything that your child is constipated, please go and see your GP because constipation can have a knock on effect with bedtime wetting as well. Uh, your child may still be in pull-ups as well, so we need you to consider removing them. That's one of the main things we say when you come to clinic. This can be especially difficult for parents, um, but trust me, this does work. It really, really does work. And often your children don't want to be in pull-ups anymore as well. So we just need to be brave, just go with it, be patient and go without the pull-ups. But also it's a good idea to make sure that you get a mattress protector as well because we don't want to be replacing them very very regularly the thing is pull-ups these days they're such good quality that they absorb so much of the urine and draw it away from the body that then children they can't feel the sensation of being wet at night yes yeah, so just to take over from there by removing a pull-up um children are able to experience the sensation of being wet um, and it can allow them to wake um, at night time and, and use the toilet. It can take a number of weeks or not. Um, and both uh, the parent um, or the carer need to be patient as they might experience more wet beds initially. Um, 
The next thing we're going to just mention is lifting. So lifting at night time is not recommended. Um, it can result in a dry bed, but it won't solve the bedwetting. The child needs to learn to respond to its own body signals overnight. Another um, important thing to do is talk to your child about their bedtime routine. Are they okay with going to the bathroom overnight? Do you need to consider leaving some lighting on in the landing or in the bathroom? The bathroom can be a scary place for a child at night time. Um, and could a potty or a bottle in the bedroom help initially? And finally, um, at, at bedtime, um, encourage your child to have a double wee. And what we mean by that is that when you go to bed and the child brushes their teeth, have a wee. Um, and just before they get into bed, we recommend having another wee. And just for this wee, especially for the boys, we recommend that they sit down on the toilet seat. This is just to ensure that they empty their bladder completely. So finally, um, we're going to we're going to finish off by saying that there is advice and support out there um, and for further support and help and treatment options, please contact your local school nursing team as we are here to support you. And remember, it's not your child's fault and it is a very treatable condition.